I read a quote once, if words can describe where you are, then keep going. At the moment, words can't describe where we are. This is Fiordland. I joined myself, my brother Clay and my father Steve on a 10 day expedition into the big country. Be prepared for roaring stags, some close encounters and some fresh fish. So here we are, we made it to Tia now. Um, we've got the, the briefing, in, briefing in an hour, so we've got an hour to burn. Um, the weather's looking a bit iffy in there at the moment. The forecast isn't too bad though, it's supposed to be clearing by tomorrow. About lunchtime, then we've got a couple of really nice fine days ahead of us. So we get up there in the tops and uh, have a good look around. All right, day one, we're at the Southern Lakes helicopter base. Um, mates in the V3 just about to land and pick us up and we'll head in, so we'll see you in there. So what we've done, we've landed at Georgetown hut just in here. We're unloading a whole lot of gear now, put in the hut, and then we're gonna bugger off, back up to the Henry Saddle at the top end of the block, get dropped off with five days with the camping gear. Uh, then we're gonna work our way back down here, hunting our way back down. So. What about that? What about that? There's that moment we all love when that chopper disappears. And there's this. Look at this. Look at it. Ah, oh, just can't beat it. Oh, how good. Take it all in. You sort of remember Fjordland being a beautiful place, but then you quickly forget about these little buggers. Ah, and they just chew the shit out of you. So we just started our first slog, we've just been dropped in the machine there at Henry Saddle. We're heading up the ridge towards um, Henry Peak. We're going to camp halfway in between here and there and uh, spend the first night there. So we've just um, stopped part of the way along the ridge here towards Mount Henry. Set up camp down below here and um, about lunchtime now, so we're going to stop for a feed and then head around and glass them below Mount Henry there and um, probably sit there till dark and come back here and spend the night. So we just had to park up for a wee bit and we're um, actually waiting for a bit of time to pass till we can duck over into the um, head basin up behind us there. We just sort of want to better approach that for the last couple of hours of light and sit above that. And see what's in it, so we've just stopped for a brew, sit here and enjoy the sand flies. Day two, uh, we've had a pretty uneventful night. Didn't get any more in a few going down the valley uh, at all. Doesn't mean anything. I uh, tried to sit on the top this morning just to catch the sunrise and have a listen down into the, uh, the Wapiti River block. It's going quite well down there, so there's obviously animals still going for it. Just because of the weather forecast on the mountain radio last night, it's supposed to really pack it in uh, quite seriously tonight and tomorrow. So Make our way down to uh, catch them down there, head down the middle of the valley, and uh, we might have some action in the water on the way through. But basically, we're going to head back down to the very bottom of the valley, hopefully, by tonight. Uh,
so we just stopped in the main Catherine Creek for lunch. Um, as you can see right up there, that high rounded knob is exactly where we camped last night, just down to the right hand side of that. This has been a fair hike right down to uh, Henry Saddle and down into here. Uh, still had a fair way to go yet, but we'll just have a feed and carry on. So the slip here where um, I think the first period guys said they camped at the base of it here and had plenty of roaring action but I think that's maybe what stuffed us up but we're actually just watching a wee spiker have a, a wee spiker have a good graze up there but he's still in velvet which is which is bloody odd um, he's got still got velvet spikes but very red looking animal and he didn't seem too worried about us so silly bugger no. Decided to um, battle out this weather that's meant to be coming. We set up camp here on a slip just below, um, just up above the head of Lake Catherine. So um, we're just gonna ride it out, I think. And, uh, Couldn't think of a better place to be honest. Sitting here having a having a cup of tea, all over overlooking the head of Lake Catherine, and a whole lot of clearings and that amongst it. Been oh, 40 minutes or so till dark. So hopefully something might start happening in between now and then. Ten minutes before dark. And what cows just walked out down here. Yeah. She gone. She she's there. Oh yeah. Start of day three, as expected, we've woken up to rain on the roof of our tent, so we've quickly packed up, stuffed our faces with a with a greasy little backcountry feed, and uh, we're going to race back to the hut, which is about three three and a half hours away. Uh, we still got to go right around the edge of Lake Catherine and and down from there, so we'll uh, we'll probably catch you back at the hut. Oh, here's a little bit of history for you as we look down on Lake Catherine here. Um, Back in 1923, some 18 years after the Wapiti were actually released, uh, Vivian MacDonald shot the very first legal, I may say legal, Wapiti on the, on the shores of Lake Catherine, straight over there. Um, as the story tells it, he spotted it, you can't quite see on the, uh, the shore right down the end, he spotted it right up the head, head here and he managed to scramble his way around the lake and, and shoot it. And it, um, one of the few Wapiti that was in the 400 club and uh, scored 411 Douglas. So, yeah, a little bit of history in the Catherine block, right on the shores there of uh, Lake Catherine. After a bit of a long, wet, soggy walk, we're just pulling up back to the Georgetown hut. Now we've got visitors. They're here. Yeah. Oh well. <clears throat> knock knock! How are you going? Oh, 
Well, it's day four. Um, I'm standing down on the rocks in front of the hut having a brew. I've been listening for some noise but can't hear anything actually. Um, looks like a nice calm day. But I think we're going to have a bit of a hut day and maybe an evening hunt off the, uh, off the edge of the sound there somewhere and maybe a bit of fishing this morning. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. The other half of uh, the, the, the other guys that are sharing the block with us aren't back yet. One of the guys is back and the other guys were actually due back last night so he's starting to get a bit worried so we'll see if we can get him on the mountain radio this morning and um, we might have to go and do a pick up on the boat. Well we've just, just launched the HMS cave. We're um, heading out for a blue codfish. We're actually going in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Load already, and uh, we've just crossed Catherine Creek again. And we're going to hunt the faces below Nita Peak on our way back down to the hut. And, um, we did hear a, a roar in here you know, a couple of days ago, so we'll get up high and see if we can't locate him and get onto him. So we'll see how we go. Oh, we've just heard our first close up roar, sounds like a sort of a half breed thing. 300 meters through there just across the other side of the creek. So he's going to find a nice clear spot just ahead of us and give, us a, give him a bit of a roar and see what happens. Hopefully he replies and comes in, but if not we'll just have to sneak in on him. Yeah. Now that's the sort of shit I live for. That was just awesome. We were um, oh, a few hundred meters over there and we heard a distant roaring. We were back at this guy and he was sort of half-hearted so we decided not to roar again and just snuck in on him and we managed to pick him up. Picking his way through the bush here and then I filmed him for a bit beating the shit out of this tree. He was getting in fear old Tonga. And um, hopefully it comes up right on the camera. Managed to sneak in a bit closer again. He sort of saw me, couldn't work out what it was, walked off, and then I filmed one of his hinds or half breed cow things for a bit. He shouldn't just stand there watching me. So that was a hell of a buzz. Hopefully, I got a bit of action on camera. He looked like a um, quite a young stag, maybe an eight point, but uh, he was really, really wide, so potentially could turn into something. But great to let him grow. Excellent. A bit of history for you here while well, we're sitting there having a snack. Um, we're quite high up on the Nita Faces, the Nita Peak is just up there. Um, George Chown back down there, Lake Catherine back up the valley here further. The sixth biggest WAP, um, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this, 460 odd Douglas score. Sixth biggest shot in, um, in Fjordan was shot just on these faces, I'm not sure exactly whether it was on the tops or down in the bush here but that's a bloody monster whoppity to be walking around in this sort of scrub. Um, yeah, just a little bit more history for you. We're just stopping for some lunch and some lollies. A wee bit of a cook up. Back country each and then so we'll be back at the hut in a couple of hours. Looks like there's some shit weather coming down the valley so Probably a good idea to get out of it. 
I just had the squirrel just just heard him land back at our hut. We're only about 400 metres up above the hut at the moment, but um, unknown reason why he's landed, a little bit concerning, but we're gonna shoot back down there now and check it out, uh, see what's going on. So the news isn't 100% all good, but everyone's okay. We're just back at the hut now. Um, Southern Lakes is flying and having a winch. The other half of our um, team of hunters in Lake Catherine out of the Overlander. Um, they got stuck up there last night, decided to camp out, but sounds like they have triggered the beacon. Um, let's hope they get out of there okay. Southern Lakes providing the awesome service they do. Everyone's okay though. No shortage of action, that's the um, party just flowing out that we've been sharing the block with. I think they've done it hard for the first five days and decided that it wasn't for them and they've pulled out. So. Uh, Good for us, we've got the block to ourselves and the hut to ourselves for the next five days. So it's heading down the old HMS cave again and um, we're going to head round the southwest arm and catch up with uh, Billy Hansen and Brendan Gentle and might have a beer on the cray boat. Let's see how we go. So we're sneaking a cheeky beer and aboard the, uh, aboard the Amazon here in the middle of the southwest arm of Fjordland in Georgetown. Um, Billy Hansen's cray boat. We just called him to say good day and been welcomed aboard for a beer and been offered showers and feeds and whatnot. It's a bloody special place in here. So it's day six. Uh, we're aboard the HMS cave again and we're heading around to the southwest arm. We're just kind of day hunting around there every day from the hut. Um, unfortunately our weather forecast is crap for the rest of the rest of the trip so we're just going to day hunt uh, rather than get out and stay there so um, we're just getting amongst the scrub today and um, see what we see. So we're actually just cruising into the northwest arm and we've ended up in the middle of a pot of dolphins. Not sure what they're doing but they're playing around. It's awesome. There must be a heap of them under the water. Southwest Arm, nice little bay here. Um, we're going to do a big, big loop right up and under the bluffs up in here today. Oh, probably half a day. Climb up the ridge, head back around, come back down through here, and have a bit of a roar up. See if we can't get onto anything. And so we'll just play it by ear. I'm getting pick, picked up back down here uh, later this arvo. I've been climbing for a good couple of hours now. Um, still haven't heard a roar. Uh, no, that wasn't a roar. I've just been cruising along this ridge here, and there's plenty of stag rubbings along it, and stag sign and that sort of thing. But there's just nothing roaring whatsoever. I've just given a big roar down into this valley down here, but um, yeah, it's just dead quiet. Dead quiet. Very wet though. I'm a bit wet and a bit cold and getting a bit frustrated. Um, been stomping around this um, wet fjordland bush for 
I've got over four hours now and have not heard any noise so I claim it's pretty much impossible to hunt these animals in this sort of country when they're not making noise. So I might turn and head back down to um, the water's edge for pickup and call it a day. Get back to um, camps at Wildfire. It's amazing how quickly your frustration turns to excitement when you see a deer. Um, I'm only sort of a couple hundred metres up off the edge of the sea now and um, just spotted a scab, it's quite a scabby looking um, <coughs> red yearling just standing in the bush watching me walk past and uh, it actually stood there long enough for me to get the camera out and, and film it for a bit before it walked off so I thought that was pretty cool pretty into the hunt uh, all in all a pretty frustrating hunt but that's hunting for you